Yes. Welcome everybody for the first time ever. Let me welcome you to the C World. My name is DJ Dani Acosta and I'm bringing you this project because I want to get inside into the people that make us dance, make us have a great time into the Zumba world. So guys, this new project is for you and I'll be so happy to receive all your comments and ideas to make this a podcast that we can bring to the community, that we can learn from the instructors, that we can learn from the students and have a lot of fun. So in the Sea World, my project is to bring, as I mentioned, famous instructors, the people that we have danced with, that we admire, and get to know them a little bit more. What do they like? Uh, some experience that have happened in the stage, out of the stage. There's so many things to say into this Sea World. And you know what? I'm so surprised because in Zumba, when I get there, I was just so amazed to find so many things like this huge community which has its own language because, I mean, if you're from outside, you don't know what is a says, what could be a CJ, what is a scene. Your clothing, guys, like, you kill it. I, I don't wear, some, I don't use super wear, my own choice, but, I mean, beautiful. And dancing all over the world, like, this is not something that I just find in a couple of jeans in the United States, but something that blew my mind, like, people in Asia, Europe, everywhere in the world dancing to the beat. So what an amazing time. This is the first time that I do this and, you know, I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm, I'm just excited because I wanted to do this for so long that I say today, let's do it right now. So the first episode, I want to bring the people, but I think that it's fair that you know first the story of DJ Dani Acosta. <laughs> you know, it's funny because... I didn't have somebody to interview me, but what about if I tell you the things that matter to me, why I'm into Zumba, and what I want to achieve in the next months, years, staying with the scene community. So let's get started. All right, guys. So the first thing I want you to know, I'm from Colombia. I'm 32 years old, and I live now in Charlotte, North Carolina. How did I end up in this beautiful world of Zumba? All right, let me tell you from the early beginning, I'm gonna move you like 21 years to my 11 years. It happened that when I was a child, I used to be a little bit shy. I hated going to parties because, you know, back in the day in Latin America, on these parties, they used to have these line dances that I think as you as a kid hated. For real, like nobody used to like going to these line dances. So I remember my mother told me that she was she signed me up for dance classes in December. I was 11 years old at the time, and so I remember that I went to these dance classes, and in into these three weeks they teach me how to dance salsa, merengue, cumbia, and tropical music. Me just being 11, what I'm gonna do with this? So I remember that after these classes, my mother bought me a couple of the strober lights and the party lights, and we have a stereo. So my friends, they got to know that I, <laughs> that I did these dance classes. So they told me, why don't you throw a party in your home? So I got the garage, I, my mom pulled the car out, and for the first time, that was, I think, January 2000. One, January 2002, I'm not pretty sure. I threw my first party at 11 years old. It was amazing, you know. I got known into the neighborhood for being the guy that do parties for kids every two weeks or very often. And the word got spread into the neighborhood, so I started doing little parties with my friends. It was such a fun time. So when we went to 2004, I was in ninth grade, a little more teenager. <laughs> And I remember that a friend of mine, he was doing a class. He told me, hey, Daniel, I'm going to these DJ classes. What do you think? Like, do you do, you st- do, you do parties and this stuff? But what about if you start learning about DJing? So this was in Medellin, Colombia, by the way. <laughs> so when I was in Medellin on 2004, I took these classes. Um, the first thing that many DJs learn first is to play EDM, electro dance music, even electronic music. 
and I got in love with the thing. Like I was having a great time, but back in the day in Medellin, the the highest thing was playing reggaeton. It was brand new, having Daddy Yankee, Ivy Queen, Nicky Jam. All these guys were the bomb. So my first interest was to play reggaeton. So that's 2004. I got my degree after four, five, six months playing the academy. And I was out now in the parties. My mother and my grandfather bought me my first DJ equipment. And I went to a couple parties, had a great time. And the beginning of my career starts playing in nightclubs for for people, for ki um, kids underage. We used to have a little nightclubs that were uh, under 18. We could go have some fun, no drinks. Party was until 12, 12 a.m. On that time, if mom was out there, you had to go <laughs> with your parents. It was so embarrassing. Thank God I was a DJ, so my, my parents were never around while I was working. <laughs> so what happened? What is the pinpoint? What is a, um, a big point for my career? 2006 in Medellin, I get to meet J Balvin. In 2006, J Balvin starts hard on his career and he's going to all the high schools in Medellin, universities and places. So we become friends, my group of friends with him, and we start going to all these places. I was 16, 17 on that time, and we had a great time. So meeting Jay Bobbin was great because he was a visionary. I respect this guy so much for everything that he has accomplished. And I remember that for going to party and um, being a reggaeton DJ back in the day, on 2008, I have a big, big shot. My first biggest shot was that he called me one time and he said, Daniel, I need a DJ to come with me to the United States to play at a couple parties on New York City. Guys, I was in shock for the first time in my life. You know, that, those dreams of being in the music and start traveling, having some fun. It was happening. It was April 2008, me flying an overnight, uh, another day flight, five hours to New York City with Jay Bobbin sleeping on the airplane. It was crazy. It was I, I treasure that memory because we went to New York. We stayed in Washington Heights and we threw that party. You know, 2008, this guy still is not uh, as famous as he is today. And the years go by, so we started still playing in 2009, 2010, and 2011. I'm going in tours with him in the United States, mostly New Jersey, New York, Orlando, and Miami. We had an amazing time. But on 2011, at the end of the summer, I did my last event. Because on 2012, I came to live in the United States. So, of course, he continued and he grew to be the number one musician in the world the past years, like one of the most influential Latin American person. And I'm so proud of that and so grateful. I just wanted to mention that into my story because it was one of the things that remarked my career. So, what happened then? I'm giving you a little bit of story. I don't know these things, and now I'm going to tell you later how I got into Zumba. On 2012, when I got here, I started playing some nightclubs in the city where I came, which was Greensboro, North Carolina. There was a famous club on that time called Artistica Nightclub, and we had a great time too. Me playing Friday, Saturday, and beautiful community. I treasured them. We danced a lot. It happens now, the first time that I did Zumba, It was 2014, the end of 2014, it was October. And in my city, in Greensboro at that time, there was a CJ growing. His name is CJ Bond Stanley Gossi. Shout out to him if he ever gets to listen to this. I'm so happy because he was the key, my introduction to Zumba. One of my friends told me that he was going to do a party on a gym and he was looking for a DJ because he wanted to do something special. So I got invited to this, and you know, at the beginning, I have to be real. Um, I thought that Zumba was just that thing that you used to do on the gym, and um, people wearing flashy mm, clothes like the the neon green and the cargo pants. <laughs> that was something that that I thought was just for the gym. But so what happened in there is that 
I see all these people having a lot of fun, like we are in a nightclub. They're dancing, having a great time. But it's 11 a.m., man. You know, I, I'm used to go to parties from 10 p.m. until 3 a.m. almost every weekend. And I see these people having the time of their lives at 11 a.m. On a, on, a, on a gym, in a basketball court. You know, I had a great time. I, I really enjoyed a lot. And I had the opportunity that some people saw me. So after this party with Bon, I got I, I have the contact information from another amazing CJ that you may know. She lives in Durham area. And this is CJ Erica Dixon. You know, she has carried the flag of soca music and the Caribbean music. And she's an amazing, amazing CJ. She has a trajectory, a trajectory of around 10 years. I don't know. But she is just wonderful. So I do parties with Erica. I do parties with Bon and I get to meet more of these CJ guys in the, um, in the community, in Greensboro, Charlotte, Raleigh. Such, such a great time. So I started doing parties for Zumba. I started doing a lot of fundraising, um, CJ events, and I got invited to these places. Amazing. Now, the, the most important point, <laughs> here I want to mention something. 2017. I never knew what it was Syncon. I'm I'm working. I'm I've been working on Zumba since 2014, and I see that every summer these guys go to Orlando, and I start seeing some pictures of people having a lot of fun, and there was Shaggy, there was Prince Royce, and 2017, I I get to see that there is Daddy Yankee on the 10 year anniversary of the Syncon. Man, what a great time. I mean, me watching from the phone, all you having a lot of fun. And I was I was at home. <laughs> It happens then that I've been working for four years and I'm starting doing some warm-ups. Warm-ups for Bond, warm-ups for Erica, for other people. But you know, just just lightly. Not nothing too serious. Just a little bit of this. But then I get to see I get to see a cover of um I think it was the pre the pre or the post party of the convention. You know, DJ Gringo runs the pre party in the in the big nightclub, and usually DJ Francis do the the party the the after party when the scene can is over, right? So I remember there was this poster of these guys like like this was a five poster like the battle of the DJs, DJ Francis and DJ Gringo, and me is still, <laughs> still in the back like, you know. I remember that day I say, you know, guys, I want to be the third DJ coming to Zumba. Like, for real, I want that so bad. I know I respect my respects to DJ Francis, DJ Gringo, and I wanted to be the third one. So I was like decided. I remember that I grow back in the day, I post and I say, I see you on SyncCon 2018. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but I will get to SyncCon 2018. And I tell you how I made it because... It's another amazing story. So it's just funny. From seeing you having a lot of fun, I see the possibility to still do my career on Zumba. Why? Because what I what really got me in love with this is that we're having fun, we're partying, but we're doing it for our health and we're doing it for good things. You know, I was used to being in the nightclubs and sometimes you get to see things that you don't like. Sometimes you, you get involved into situations because drinks, because behavior. And there's nothing of that in here. In in the sea world, what you see is people having a lot of fun and not too much problems of that. You know, just a great environment where you are accepted, where you dance at your own beat and just have a lot of fun. So when 2007 finishes, I start doing more warm up for people. I get to get some notices from other CJs in Atlanta, some CJs in New York, and some people in the West Coast. The beginning of 2018 was very important for my career because I had a phone call from a friend in Arizona. And this friend tell me, Danny, do you know CJ Mauricio Camargo? Big shout out to Mauricio, and I tell you why this guy is so important for me on this Zumba journey. So they tell me that My, that my they like my warm-ups and that Mauricio is always looking for for warm-ups that you know he's touring the world 
He's starting to get known. He's going to all, to these places, Argentina, Asia, and all over the United States. And this this person gets me to connect with Mauricio. So the first assignment, the first big shot that I have, like for getting for getting people to know me in more big in Zumba. One second. <laughs> The, the first shot was Cine Academy in Spain 2018. I think this was in Madrid. And on that time, there was CJ Mauricio. He was presenting Hit the Streets. So when we talked the first time, he told me, I want to take something that blew their minds, like something very amazing. And then I, I was excited. Like, you know, I, I've been wanting this shot. I, I've been wanting to become the third DJ to, to come seriously into Zumba. And then I get to work hours and hours in a project that was called Son of the Street. Somebody may remember this warm-up. And if done, you can check it on digitaniacosta.com slash Mauricio Camargo. That is the first warm-up that became viral from me. Son of the Streets. They played this warm-up in Spain. And I posted on my website. And I got hugely surprised like to see... A lot of people getting it from countries where I never had a presence, like people, people from uh, countries in Europe, in Asia, other guys here in the United States started to get in these warm-ups, and, and I'm surprised. Like, it was a huge surprise for me having, having this. <laughs> so after doing Son of the Streets, and this was on February 2018, I started doing some other projects with him. And I got his invitation to participate on 2018, Hit the Street, um, the, the session at Syncon 2018. And, by, and in that time, they had also the Streets of Colombia. So it was amazing because we get to do Hit the Streets, like global streets, and we get to do our own country, Colombia, bringing the beat. So I feel so accomplished that, that day because, you know, I, I put a post in 2017 saying that I was going to sing con 2018 and boom right there that happened the first time I went to convention it was an amazing time I wish people tell me that you were gonna sleep a few you were gonna walk a lot and you were gonna have a great time that that you know when you finish convention and you come back you got a little bit sad for sure okay 2018 has passed we come to 2019 and thank God after convention, things grew up a lot. I had the pleasure to work with so many CJs on the war. I had the pleasure to meet says that that were my inspiration. Like for example, Steve Booth. Like Steve Booth for me was the guy that I saw in 2014. I was like, I want to meet that guy. Like for me, Steve Booth was big. And you know, you have these Zumba live streams, and I wanted to meet these guys. So I get to meet Steve get to meet Cass and a lot of the Zumba talent and so proud, so happy that I get to collaborate with them, get to work with them. And well, 2018 was an amazing year. That was the first time that I got to travel with this. You know, when I was traveling with J Bobby in on the United States, it was amazing. And I wanted more of that, but I was part of his staff. I was part of his team, of course. Like people went to watch J Bobbin. So my work was just to play for him. But, you know, it, they came for him. When I went on 2018, I felt amazing because, of course, you come to see the CJs, you come to dance. But now I'm being part of something. Like I really felt that love. And so we get to go. The first place that I went, the first, first place that I went after from here from North Carolina, it was San Jose, California. A uh, big shout out to the Dancing Angels Boulevard. Rocio, Gabby, you know, you know, girls, I love you. Thank you for that opportunity. After that, San Antonio, we went, we, we went to Arizona. We went to Cincinnati with Jonathan Benoit, had a great time. And the Zumba Cruise, I was in this cruise having a lot of fun. But I was not in the rooster of DJs. It was DJ Gringo, DJ Francis, and DJ Chris. But you know, I just sneak, I just sneak in and <laughs> play at a couple, at a couple classes into the Zumba Cruise. Great time. 2019 was amazing. Now in 2020, well, guys, you know we were ready to go again to do all these things, and boom, the the COVID-19 pandemic just hit. But 
people started doing classes at home and and I was excited. I was teaching them a little bit how to do these Zoom things, how to set up because it was a challenge. Like I get to know these things because I work with a lot of technology. So um, I was able to coach a little people. But, you know, when you took over, it was great because now I was connected to see, for example, Mansoor in South Africa doing his thing, Maurice, Anna, and I had the time to do collaborations with them because Zumba was doing their live streams. And so they asked me if I could do some warm-ups for them. So great time. So, you know, the funny thing is that from the pandemic, I had the opportunity to meet more people. And, I, and I'm so grateful because now my mixes are being played in, in so many places where, that I had never dreamed that I get to participate in parties where in other ways I would never be. So I am very, very excited for that. So this is a little part of the story of DJ Danny Acosta. And as I mentioned, the Sea War is going to be a project where I'm going to bring some of the most um, amazing people that I have met in the Zumba world because I wanted to get to know more about them. What, what do they like? How do they live? What, ha what happened in, in the Zumba class? What happened after the Zumba class? How they prepare and what insights they can give us to have better classes and to become better instructors or have a great time as students. Thank you so much. This was the first C word and I hope to see you in the next episode. Thank you. My name is DJ Danny Acosta. Connect with me at DJ Danny Acosta, Instagram, Facebook, and my website, djdaniacosta.com for the fire ups. Thank you so much. <laughs>